Man, it's been a long, long, long seven months, but finally, it's basketball season, and yeah, here's a review. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Drew, better known as RockShock01, and today, yesterday, whenever you're watching this, the fifth-ranked Kansas Jayhawks began their 2022-2023 campaign with an exhibition contest against Pittsburgh State and won comfortably by a final score of 94 to 63. Yeah, so before I get started, uh, I want to say that there was a pregame ceremony because I don't know if the cameras caught it, but there was another banner that dropped in Allen Fieldhouse as there was three dropped during Late Night in the Fog this year, which was the Big 12 Championship, the Final Four, and National Championship banners. This time, it was a banner that gave tribute to Bill Self Sr., the father of head basketball coach Bill Self, and they dropped the Just Load the Wagon banner. This is the second non-championship slash accomplishment banner that hangs in Allen Fieldhouse, as the Beware the Fog banner was first, and that still hangs on the north end. And yeah, it was a really cool thing to do before the game, and yeah, I filmed it because I was there, and it was really cool, and I'd like to show you guys that. So yeah, that happened, and to the game, there were times where it was a little crazy, but it feels like the defending national champions didn't miss a beat and won comfortably. There were some good things, but there was a few bad things on top of it. So with that being said, for those of you who do not know, I give positives and negatives about the game. I give a player the game and a player who needs to improve. So without further ado, let's do it. So let's start with the positives. One big positive was KU shooting in the second half, and it was really stinking good. The Hawks ended up shooting 66% from the field, 85% from three, and 71% from the free throw line. Not bad numbers. Also for the game, KU shot 56% from the field, including 40% from beyond the arc. So yeah, the shooting numbers were there. Also doing well defensively as KU held Pittsburgh State to shoot 42% from the field, 41% from three, and the Gorillas shot 29% from the free throw line, going two for seven. Ouch. KU won the turnover battle against the Gorillas as KU forced 27 Pittsburgh State turnovers while the Jayhawks only had 14. Yeah, the 14 is a high number, but the 27 forced? Jeez. On top of that, KU won the rebounding battle 35-34 to after being down on the glass in the first half. And KU won the block battle as KU had nine total blocks in this game, while the Pittsburgh State Gorillas only had two. So, a lot of good things. And yeah, with that said, those are my positives. Now, the negatives. Uh, where to start? The first 10 minutes of this ball game was awful. And... KU was down, yes, down by 15 early in this game, including a 12-0 start for the Pittsburgh State Gorillas. What? I just don't know. We just seemed like we just laid a huge egg, and we were waddling in self-pity for the first 10 minutes. Thankfully, the last 10, we started to kick it in high gear and went into the locker room up by five. But yeah, going back to that first half, KU's numbers were pretty bad, which includes shooting 46% from the field, which is okay. But the three-point and free-throw percentages were god-awful, which the free-throw percentage was 37.5%, and three-point shots, 15% from beyond the arc. Also, the free-throw numbers were bad entirely, as KU shot 53% from the free throw line going eight of 15. So yeah, they're gonna be running laps because of that. But thankfully the positives outweigh the negative, but there is a lot of things that need to be fixed going into this season. And the free throw percentage and the slow start 
that's got to go away. So yeah, those are my negatives. Player of the game. And this one is going to be a toss up. But my honorable mention first, I'm going to give it to Jalen Wilson. Even though he was the leading scorer, I think there's a guy that really deserves it. But Jalen, got to give him some credit. In 25 minutes of play, Jalen Wilson had 23 points, four rebounds, one assist, and a steal. And yeah, that is good for Jalen because he's going to be that guy this season. And thankfully, that showed. Shooting-wise, Jalen shot 9 of 17 from the field, 2 of 5 from beyond the arc, and 3 for 4 from the free throw line. Thankfully, his free throw percentage was fine. He missed his first one, and I'm like, oh boy, here we go. But thankfully, the last three that he shot went in. But yeah, as I said, he's my honorable mention. So Wilson's not my player of the game. Then who is? And it's the true freshman, Grady Dick, who gets my player of the game nod. Oh boy, the freshman didn't start, but he played great coming off the bench. In 23 minutes of play, Grady finished with 20 points and four rebounds, going seven of nine from the field, three for five from beyond the arc, and three for three from the free throw line. Yeah, even though the stats don't count, Grady played incredible. I mean, he looks like he could be an All-American at this point just by the numbers he had. He was all over the place. He was good in transition. He had a good feed from Zach Clemens to get a dunk. And yeah, it was really good. Now, I just hope that Grady can keep the consistency going as the season rolls on. But yeah, this was a stellar performance. So that's why Grady Dick is my player of the game. Now, my player who needs to improve is pretty obvious in my eyes because he had a cold shooting night, and that was Joseph Yesifu. In 16 minutes of play, Joe finished with two points, one rebound, and a steal, going one of seven from the field and 0 for two from the three-point line. Gosh, I really feel bad for saying this, but the Joe from Drake is not showing up for Kansas whatsoever. And I don't know what is going on, but he's struggling every time he plays. And I'm praying to God that he can be the guy that comes off the bench and puts on a show, gives us like eight, nine, maybe nine and a half points a night. But right now it's not showcasing. And I think over time that is going to hopefully improve, but I don't see it as of this moment. So... That's why I have Joe Yesifu as my player who needs to improve. Now, before I finish, I'm going to showcase some top plays in my mind. One of them is a series of plays, and the other two are standalone. We'll start with a series of plays, and that was all done by Kevin McCuller Jr. He scored seven straight points to cut Kansas's deficit all the way down to one late in the first half. So, yeah, here's McCuller's three plays. The next one we're going to showcase comes from the player of the game, and that's Grady Dick, who was a floor general in this portion of the game as Kyle Cuff missed the three in the corner, but Grady Dick made an incredible fading putback. And the final play I'm going to be showcasing comes from junior guard Dewan Harris, and true freshman center Ernest Uday Jr. as those two played above the rim and maybe one of them called glass on this lob dunk. And here's that play. So yeah, all three, all four of those guys had incredible plays tonight. And that's gonna do it for my review of KU versus Pitt State. Again, the final score, Kansas 94, Pittsburgh State 63. Leave a like, comment, share, and subscribe. Push that notification bell. Tell your friends about these videos. And I should see you again for the next basketball review as KU returns to Allen Fieldhouse to take on Nebraska Omaha. 
But until then, have a good day. Never ever bring exotic dancers to the field house, and I'll catch you on the flip side. Peace.